Hey, this is Keith. In this video, I'm going to show you how your students can upload their own documents into the system. So I have here a brand new assignment I've just created, and there are no essays uploaded yet. And the first tab is this Upload tab, and you'll see the student section up here. So all you have to do is give them this link, www.essaytagger.com slash upload, and this five-digit alphanumeric code. This code is unique for this particular assignment. So if I go back to my home and click on a different assignment, you'll see that it has a different unique five-digit code. So that code allows the system to figure out which assignment the students are submitting their document for. Now, if you have a class web page, you can just post a combined link, and let me click on that so you see what I'm talking about where that five-digit code is just embedded as part of the URL. But I found that students have a hard time typing in this question mark ID equals and then the code. Um, it's just it's a little unfamiliar to most people who aren't you know in the web world. So I think just for simplicity it's much easier to say okay go to this slash upload and then type in this code. So let me show you what they're gonna see pop this open in a new tab, uh, enter the code provided by your instructor. If they type in you know, a wrong code, it'll tell them, hey, that wasn't valid. So they type in the correct code, they submit it. The site retrieves the assignment and shows them all the assignment details so that the student can verify, yes, I really did mean to turn in my song analysis mini essay number one. Um, you know, it's it's up to the students to make sure that they're using the correct code, that they're not trying to submit their essay to one of your older assignments. Um, you know, let's, let's assume they're big boys and girls and they can get this right. So they need to identify themselves and tell the site who they are. So I'm going to be Johnny Majerus. He's in my fourth period class. I'm going to hit submit. And now it's time for him to select his document. So when he hits select document, it pops open this selection box that is filtered to only show the file types that we support. And that's doc, docx, rtf, and text, when it also says so down here. And then the final step is they have to check this check box, which is just an academic honesty statement. I affirm that this really is my work. They submit. And we hold them here because we have to process the document in the background to make sure that it's valid, make sure it's a file format that we can understand, um, and that there aren't any problems. So once that's done, as you can see, it shows the student their document back to them so that they can confirm, yes, the site received my document, yes, it's the right one, everything looks good. Um, you know, we, sh we should put the onus on the students to confirm these things, as opposed to they turn it in and the next week I have to say, hey, Johnny, uh, I couldn't open your document. There's some problem with it. Can you can you give that document to me again? You know, none of that anymore. They submit it. They verify it. Uh, it only takes two or three seconds to process it. Um, there's really no excuse for them not to verify that, that they can see their own document here. And it's also tagged with the submit time. So Friday, December 16th, 2.16 p.m. This time is set to be in your local time zone, uh, which you configured it when you registered. And the time is set by our servers. So there's nothing the student can do to try to fake the date. You know, they can change the, the time on their own computer, but that's not going to affect anything. Uh, the, the time that's displayed is the time in our servers that we control. So let me refresh the assignment page here, and you'll see Johnny Majerus's document now shows up. Uh, so that was all pretty straightforward. Now there's one minor thing I want to show you. Um, let me go back to the upload screen. If Johnny were to say, hey, you know what, I'm feeling more mature today. I'm John Majerus. Uh, no more of this Johnny stuff. Uh, and he hits submit. The site does a last name search, and it finds a match for a Johnny Majerus, but no John Majerus. So at this point, he needs to say, hey, okay, fine, I am Johnny. Um, or, you know, maybe it is 
the, the case where he's not on the list yet, that you haven't added him to the roster. In that case, he'd say, hey, I'm not on this list. That uh, that Johnny Majerus kid, that's not me. I'm, you know, Carlos Majerus, his half-brother. Um, you know, whatever it is. So that's the only thing that they might see if there isn't an exact match on the name um, that that was already entered into the class roster for the site. But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. That's what they can expect to see. Um, and the whole process is fairly foolproof. Of course, students will find ways to, you know, muck this up. Um, but in the next video, I'll show you how to manage your roster, how to handle some of the situations when students do, you know, kind of dumb things with this upload process, um, and the tools that are in place to help you sort through that and, and get it all cleaned up. Uh, I do recommend that you step your students through this process the first time so that they can see how it's going to work. And, you know, do just what I did. Upload a, a sample document, and then when you're done, you can clean it up by just hitting delete confirm, yes, I really want to delete that document, submit, um, and then it's wiped out of the system and you know, you're back to square one. So there you go. Let me know if you have any questions.